Well, welcome to Question of the Week. We hope that you're enjoying this series. And if you're enjoying the series, remember to hit the subscribe button there. And you can look at all our past shows on the YouTube channel for Evidence and Answers or the Honolulu Christian Church. So uh, thanks for being you know, a part of Question of the Week. And we hope that this has really helped answer some of the questions or for those of you who are believers in Christ to really strengthen your faith and give you confidence to engage the lost world for Christ. Well, we're finishing up our series on the Bible here, Evidence for the Inspiration of the Bible. And as we talked about, there's several evidences for the divine inspiration of the Bible, that of all the books written uh, that you can find throughout the world, only the Bible is confirmed by supernatural acts of God. And we went through some of the evidences. Uh, if you'd like to see the past shows, you can go on our YouTube website at Evidence and Answers or the Honolulu Christian Church. We talked about Jesus, the Son of God, affirms the unique inspiration and authority of the Bible. We talked about the indestructibility of the Bible, the unity despite great diversity in authorship evidence, the legacy of prophecy, archaeology, and now we're coming to the Bible and science. And one of the questions a lot of people have is, does the Bible have any relevance with modern science or does has modern science relegated the Bible to irrelevance or you know, can the Bible and science, are they compatible? Can they get along? Or does you have to accept one and reject the other? Well, as we come to this discussion, we need to understand one thing here. The Bible is not a modern day scientific textbook. All right. So we don't want to go to one extreme and find scientific formulas all over in the Bible because you know, you're not going to find that unless you really read things into it. But then we don't want to go to the other extreme and says the Bible has absolutely nothing to say about God's created order. The Bible does speak about the world that God created and what it said about God's universe and God's word is indeed true and does indeed give then the framework or the foundation for the modern sciences. That is why it is the Christian worldview that gave birth to the modern sciences. And we're going to talk about this later. But you look at all the founders of the modern sciences. There were all men who had a strong belief in God. Many were committed followers of Jesus Christ. And they knew that the universe was intelligently designed by a creator. And therefore, through reason and empirical research, the design of the designer could be discovered and understood because God was a rational, reasonable God and designed the universe in such a fashion. So although the Bible is not a modern scientific textbook, it does speak of God's created order and what it says about the universe is indeed true. And in fact, many things that the Bible says about about the universe around us, only modern science has now confirmed as indeed true. That's why the Bible laid the foundation. It's the Christian worldview that laid the foundation for the modern sciences. And for hundreds of years, Christianity and science were allies. It's only in recent times, right, that have they been made to look like enemies, right? Let's take a look at a few things that the Bible says about the created order that indeed modern science has now confirmed. First, the universe had a beginning, Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, for over two centuries, modern scientists believed that the universe was indeed eternal, thus giving the mechanisms of chance and nature, you know, an infinite amount of time, all right, to somehow come about with, you know, the origin of life here upon the earth. Well, what we have discovered in 
modern times is that the universe is not eternal. The universe has a beginning. Scientists call this the Big Bang. Stephen Hawking, uh, the great astrophysicist of our time, stated this. <clears throat> In his work, Nature of Space and Time, he says, Almost everyone now believes that the universe and time itself had a beginning at the Big Bang. In other words, the universe exploded into being out of nothing. Time, matter, and energy are all in interconnected. You can't have one without the other. So in other words, the universe exploded into being out of nothing. Well, Genesis 1.1 states that the universe is not eternal, as the pantheistic religions of Hinduism and Taoism and others teach. It teaches that the universe has a beginning. All right? It says in Genesis 1.1, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, the Hebrew word for created is bara. And this conveys the idea of God's special activity of making something new. And bara refers to the product created, something out of nothing, not out of material that has already been made. That's why Genesis 1.1 speaks of the universe being created out of nothing, consistent with what scientific discovery has discovered just in recent times. The red shift, the radiation echo, Einstein's theory of relativity all confirm the universe exploded into being out of nothing as the Bible states. Second, here's another one. The universe is expanding. All right. Isaiah 42 verse 5 says this, Thus says God, the Lord who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it. We know that the universe begins at a starting point and then through what's called the Big Bang, it exploded into being. All right, And the universe continues to expand even to this day. Uh, <clears throat> Robert Jastrow, writes in his book, God and the Astronomers. He writes how scientists have studied many galaxies, over 42 galaxies, ranging as far as 6 billion light years from us. And what was discovered by Edwin Hubble was the red shift, that as these galaxies move apart, they turn redder. Right? And he states that <clears throat> here, the measurements now indicate that the universe was expanding more rapidly in the past than it is today. This result lends further support to the belief that the universe exploded into being. Third, here's another one. The earth is spherical or round, right? Isaiah 40 verse 22 says, It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to dwell in. There we go. Another reference to the you know, expanding of the universe, uh, but also the circle of the earth. Right Now, <clears throat> the Greeks taught that the earth was flat like a plate that rested on water. However, the Bible taught from uh, over a millennia ago that the earth is spherical, that the earth is round. Job 26 verse 7 teaches that the earth hangs in space all by itself. It reads, He stretches out the north over the void and hangs the earth on nothing. That the earth hangs or is suspended in space, resting on nothing, right? In India, they believe that the earth rested on the back of two giant turtles. The Greeks, as I taught earlier, many believe that the earth was flat like a plate and that it rested on water. Or other Greeks thought it was held up by a very large man. His name was Atlas. Uh, but the Bible teaches that the earth hangs in space all by itself. Psalm 8 verses 3 through 4 teaches that the universe was custom made for human life. The psalmist writes, When I look at the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, 
What is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you even care for him? So the universe is custom made for life. And that's what we're learning today called the anthropic principle, one of the hottest theories in science today. That not only was the earth or our solar system, but our galaxy, our universe is custom made so that we could have life on this planet. The constants that hold the universe together sit delicately on a razor's edge that if you adjust it ever so slightly, not only can we not have the universe we have now, we would not have life upon this earth. Everything from the speed of light to the force of gravity, you just adjust it just ever so slightly all right, we could not have the universe that we have now. We have just the right size star, the sun. We are in the right part of the galaxy. If you know the Milky Way galaxy, it's, it, it, it's like a spinning wheel formation. And we're on the outskirts. All right. If we were closer to the center of our spinning wheel galaxy, uh, we would not be able, you know, it would be too bright and we could not see into the far reaches of the universe. But because we're on the outside, uh, the outer edge, we can see and explore the vast reaches of the universe. It's, it's as if somebody wanted us here to explore the universe. I mean, the probability of another life form on another planet can you know is so small and the odds of there being life on another planet continue to rise and rise and rise so that uh, astronomers now have concluded that the probability that there is life on another planet is highly unlikely it could be as many scientists are saying that the earth and humanity here we are the privileged planet seems like not just the solar system but the universe is custom made for human life that is taught there in the bible psalm 8 being a good example of that another one the basic forms of animal life begin all at once and have not changed genesis 1 when you look at when god created Aided the plants and the living animals. Genesis 1 verse 12 and 20 and 21. He says, God made the animals each according to their kind. And when you look at the fossil record, indeed, that's what the record seems to show. For the early billions of years the earth existed, there's very little activity going on. The pre-Cambrian period right very little going on as we talked about in Darwinism in our earlier shows you can look at that if you want but suddenly life begins with a sudden explosion of life called the Cambrian explosion and then a several series of explosions of life follow after that the Silurian Triassic Jurassic you know uh, Cretaceous and others you biology buffs or anthropology paleontologists uh, probably know all the, ex the the life suddenly explodes these life forms appear in their full form as i talked about you know they, we don't have those little transitional forms they suddenly explode upon the earth in their full form and they really haven't changed since they appeared as the bible teaches god created each according to its kind Psalm 8 verse 8 says, The birds of the heavens and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea, that the sea has paths. And today, mariners all know, and as they drive their ships, they follow the pattern of the ocean currents that remain consistent around the oceans of the world, something the Bible talked about centuries ago. Isaiah 55, 10 through 11, Ecclesiastes 1 verse 7 teaches what's called the hydraulic cycle. Isaiah 55 teaches this, For as the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water, 
but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose. The hydraulic cycle, how you know the rain drops water uh, into the ground or into the rivers and into the oceans and then evaporates back up into the sky and we have that hydraulic cycle uh, continuously going there the bible talks about that in passages like isaiah chapter 55. so although the bible is not a modern science book when it speaks about god's created order what it says is indeed true and many of the principles which it taught about god's created order modern science has indeed confirmed to be true <laughs> unlike any other book uh, that is this ancient that claims inspiration you do not have this kind of scientific com confirmation as the bible now one of the questions here is what do we do when there is a quote contradiction between science and the bible well god speaks in two ways god speaks through special revelation his bible and general revelation through nature, all right? Through the sciences, okay? God speaks through his word and God speaks through his world. And both should be consistent. General revelation and special revelation should not conflict, but complement one another. And that's what we would argue as those of us who believe that the Bible is indeed God's word, that they complement one another. When they appear to conflict, we have to re-examine both the scientific data and our interpretation of the Bible. All right, The Bible is not wrong, but our interpretation of it can be wrong. Okay, So understand me there. Okay? <clears throat> our interpretation of the Bible can be wrong. So we need to examine both the scientific data and our interpretation of the Bible. Now, if the Bible is crystal clear, you know, on something like, Jesus is the Son of God. God created the universe out of nothing. All right. <clears throat> when the Bible is clear, we go with the Word of God. If general revelation is clear, then we don't question the truth of the Bible, but our interpretation of it. Did we interpret it correctly? All right. And there are times when our interpretation of the Bible needed to be corrected. Right? Science and discoveries in science help, help enhance our understanding of the Bible. But there have been times where it helped redefi uh, refine or sometimes correct our understanding of the Bible. We don't want to dismiss the science too quickly all right? and say, well, I've interpreted the Bible correctly. There's nothing wrong with my interpretation. It's perfect. It's the science that must be wrong. All right? We have to humble ourselves here and, and take a look at both and see did we interpret the bible correctly right and the exam the classic example that's given to us regularly of course is galileo galileo uh, up till his time people believe that our solar system was geocentric that all the planets revolved around the earth well galileo after his studies with his telescope he discovered and he stated no, our solar system is heliocentric. The planets revolve around the sun. Well, Galileo was condemned by the church. Uh, the church interpreting passages like Psalm 93 verse 1. It says, yes, the world is established and it shall never be moved. All right. And so the church condemned Galileo as a heretic and forced him to recant. All right, or uh, he would suffer uh, their judgment. And so Galileo ended up recanting in the end. However, uh, several decades later, we discovered that indeed Galileo was right and the church was wrong, right? And many uh, atheists or skeptics of the Bible now often use the Galileo example uh, as an example of how Christianity or the Bible is a hindrance to the sciences. Well, it's not that the Bible was wrong. It's that our interpretation of the Bible 
was wrong. So when there's an apparent conflict, you need to take a look at both the scientific data and our interpretation of the Bible and look at them carefully, all right, and examine both. If the Bible is clear, then we need to be patient with the scientific data and wait for more data to come out. Because many times you'll discover that indeed the Bible is correct and the science needed to be refined or the conclusions were incorrect. <clears throat> Here's another question and we'll end with this. Doesn't the Bible have scientific errors? It, it says things like the sun rises and the sun goes down. We know that the sun doesn't go up or down, but indeed it's the earth that rotates. So isn't the Bible in error when it comes to the sciences? <clears throat> well, remember that as I stated earlier, the Bible is not a modern scientific textbook, right? When it writes, it writes in the vernacular okay, of the culture in which it is written, right? So you have to understand when it's using uh, figurative speech or metaphors or other figures of speech here. For example, today, You'll never hear a weatherman on TV going, the sun, uh, uh, you'll never hear a weatherman saying, the earth rotates and the sun will appear as the earth rotates, you know, at this time, okay? You won't hear that. When you watch the weatherman on TV, they're going to say, you know, the sun rises at this time and the sun's going to go down or the sun sets at this time. Well, the weatherman knows that the sun doesn't go up and down. It's the earth that rotates. But you never hear the weatherman saying, now the earth is going to rotate and the sun will appear here. Okay? So he uses the modern day or popular vernacular. All right? Sun rises at this time. Sun goes down at this time. Just as the Bible writers do as well. Right? When you're walking on the beach with your wife and you see the sun setting, I'm sure you don't look at her and say, Honey, look at the great earth rotation happening. No, you say, look at the beautiful sunset. All right? We talk in the modern day vernacular. And in Bible times, it's often from an anthropocentric or from, you know, our perspective, from the human perspective here. So you need to understand the context of the Bible and the figures of speech in the Bible. And when you do, you'll often find there's really uh, no contradiction here. So when it comes to the Bible and science, really the Bible has a lot to say about the sciences and science is another way or another evidence that confirms that the Bible is indeed the inspired word of God. It is trustworthy and it is indeed reliable. And when it talks about God's created word and God's created world, what it says is indeed true and can be trusted. Well, thanks for being with us here on this week's episode of Question of the Week. If you want more information on science and faith and the Bible and the things that we've talked about, I encourage you to go to my website at evidenceandanswers.org, evidenceandanswers.org. There's numerous videos, articles, and podcasts, interviews that you can listen to with me and some of the top scientists from all over the world on this particular subject. And if you have any questions you would like us to address, email me at pat at evidenceandanswers.org, pat at evidenceandanswers.org. If you want to see past videos, uh, go to uh, our YouTube channel there at Evidence and Answers or the Honolulu Christian Church. And remember to hit the like or the subscribe button when you're there. Well, thanks for being with us on this week's episode of Question of the Week. Hope you are gaining and learning a lot. And we look forward to seeing you again on our next, the next time we meet here on Question of the Week.